Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another exciting episode of our Python programming tutorial series. In our previous video, we explored the essential fundamentals of Python lists. If you missed it, no worries. You can easily catch up by checking our Python tutorial playlists and join us from where we left off. For those who have been following along from the beginning, we sincerely appreciate your continued support. Now, in this video, get ready to take your Python skills to the next level as we dive into advanced concepts about lists. We'll be covering a wide range of topics including list methods, list concatenation, list replication, working with lists, using for loops with lists, the in and not in operators, the multiple assignment trick, and even incorporating the powerful enumerate, function with lists, and more. Prepare for a thrilling adventure into the depths of Python as we supercharge your coding capabilities. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced coder, this tutorial is sure to provide valuable insights that will elevate your Python programming skills. So let's jump right in. All right, let's start by understanding the fundamental concept of lists and how we can modify their elements using indexes. In Python, each element in a list is associated with an index. Starting from zero for the first element and one for the second and so on, we already discussed about this index concept in our last video, so this indexing system makes it easy for us to access and modify specific elements within the list. So in Python, lists are mutable, which means you can change their elements after they have been created. So to change the value of an element in a list, you can use its index. Let's go through some practical examples to understand this concept better. Imagine you have a shopping list and the list contains items you need to buy from the grocery store. Okay, let's create the list called Shopping List. Hmm, we are creating variable, shopping, list, and assignment operator equal to, and score brackets. Then we are inserting some fruits. That's it. We created a shopping list. So now we have a shopping list with some items. Now let's say you realize that you already have enough bananas at home and you want to replace bananas in the list with strawberries. So to do this, you can use the index of bananas in the list and assign a new value to that specific element. Okay, let's write the code and see how we can assign a new value using the index. Here I am using the index of bananas from the shopping list, which is index one, and I want to replace it with strawberries. After this assignment, the shopping list will be updated and the bananas will be replaced with strawberries. So here we use the index of bananas, which is one, to access the element at that position and then assign the value strawberries to it. Okay. Now we will run this code and see what the result from this shopping list will be. There you go. The shopping list is updated with strawberries. So this is how we can modify the list in Python using index. This concept is essential because it allows you to modify and update specific elements in a list. It's a fundamental aspect of working with lists in Python and other programming languages. Just remember that the index must be within the valid range of the list, or you will get an index error. Next, let's see how we can copy the value of one element to another element within the list. Let's use a practical example to explain this copying the value of one element to another element in lists using an index in Python. For example, imagine you are organizing a seating arrangement for a small event. You have a list that represents the current seating plan and you want to copy the name of one person to another seat. All right, let's create a list called seating plan. I am creating a variable called seating plan and an assignment operator equal to and inserted some values inside square brackets. Now we have a list called seating plan. Now let's say that due to some last minute changes, you want to move. 
Kathy. From her current seat to Bob's seat. To do this, you can copy the value at one index to another index. Okay, let's have a look at this code snippet. How we can achieve this. Here, I'm accessing the index of Kathy's, which is 2, and copying it to the element at index 1, which is Bob. After this operation, the seating arrangement will be updated, and Kathy will be moved to Bob's seat. Now, we will run this code and see the result. There you have it. We copied value from index 2 to index 1. In this example, we accessed the element at index 2 and copied its value to the element at index 1. This effectively moved the person from one seat to another without creating a new person or deleting any person from the list. This concept is crucial as it allows you to manipulate the data within the list and make changes to specific elements based on their index positions. It's an essential skill when dealing with lists or arrays in Python and other programming languages. All right. Let's jump into another example where we can assign a value to the last element using negative indexing. We already discussed about this negative index in our last video. In Python, you can use negative index to access elements from the end of the list. So, the last element has an index of minus 1 and the second to last element has an index of minus 2 and so on. In this example, we want to change the last element of the list. For example, you want to assign a special number to the last person in the seating list. So, to assign a special number to the last person in the seating list, you can use negative indexing. Let's see how we can do this using negative index. Oh, here I am, using the negative index of last persons from the list, which is minus 1, and assigning a special number to the last person. So, after this assignment, the last element in the list will be updated, and Hana will be replaced with 5. Okay, let's run this code and see the output. And just like that, last element, Hana, has been replaced with 5. In this example, we used negative indexing to access the last element of the list in Python, negative indexing allows you to access elements from the end of the list. And that's it. All right, now let's jump into another concept that is list concatenation and list replication. First up, let's talk about list concatenation. In Python, concatenation is the process of combining two or more lists to create a brand new list containing all the elements from the original lists. For instance, here we have two lists, list 1 and list 2. Now, let's concatenate them to form a new list. Here I am creating a another new list and naming it as new list and combining the above two lists. Here we use plus operator to combine two lists to create a new list value. Okay, now we will run this code and see the result. There you have it. As you can see, the result is a new list, combining the elements from both lists in the order they were concatenated. So by performing this concatenation, we get a new list with all the elements from list 1, followed by all the elements from list 2. All right, let's see another example concatenating string lists. Here we have a list called fruits, and it contains some items of type string. And also we have another list called colors, and it contains some items type string. Now we will combine these two lists to create another new list. Let's combine. Here I am creating a new list called combine list and concatenating above two lists using plus operator. Now we will run this code and see the result. As you can see the result, two lists are combined into a new list. That's all about concatenation in Python. And now let's learn about list replication. Next, let's explore list replication. This operation involves creating a new list by repeating the elements of an existing list a certain number of times. 
For example, we have a list called Original List. And now we will replicate this original list. Let's see. Here I am creating a new list called Replicate List and replicating above list using asterisk operator. Here, the asterisk operator can be used with a list and an integer value to replicate the list. Now let's run this code and see the results. And there you have it. In this example, original list contains one, two, and by replicating it three times, we created a new list. All right, let's have a look at another example about replicating a list of strings. Okay, here we have a list called word, and we will replicate this string four times into a new list. Let's replicate. I am creating a new list and naming it as repeat list, and will replicate the above list four times using asterisk operator. Now we will run this code and see the result. There you go, as you can see the result. The list is replicated four times. So, keep in mind that list concatenation and replication. Do not modify the original lists. They create new lists with the desired elements based on the concatenation or replication process. Now let's dive into another interesting concept. All right, now we'll learn an essential topic in Python that is Deleting elements from lists using the del statement. Lists are fundamental data structures in Python, and understanding how to remove elements from them is crucial. In Python, the del statement is used to remove elements from a list or any other data structure. Specifically, when used with lists, it allows you to delete one or multiple elements based on their index or remove the entire list itself. This can be useful when you want to modify the contents of a list by removing certain elements that are no longer needed. Let's dig into the details of using the del statement with lists. And I'll provide some real-time examples for better understanding. So, let's get started. The basic syntax of the del statement is del space list name index. Here, list underscore name is the name of the list you want to modify. And index is the index of the element you want to delete. Okay, all right, let's have a look at some real-time example where we use del statement to remove item from a list. Imagine you have a list containing the names of registered users in a website or application. Sometimes users might want to delete their accounts. Or you, as an administrator, may need to remove a problematic user. Here's where the del statement comes in handy. Let's say we have a list called registered users, and we want to remove a user named John from the list. Let's see how we can do this. I am creating a list called registered users and assigning some values to it. Okay, first we will run the code and see the list of values available in the above list. Let's run the code and see the result. As you can see the result, we have five usernames in the above list. Now we will remove a user named John from the list using del statement. Let's do it. Del statement and list name that is registered users and index of username John is 2. Now we will run this code and see whether the username John has been removed or not from the list. There you go. In this example, the del statement helps us remove John from the list of registered users and the list is updated without his name. Next, let's remove multiple elements from the list called fruits. We'll remove the first two and the last two elements from the list. To do this, you can use slicing along with the del statement. First, we will work on this simple example, and then we will jump into a real-time example where we can use this del statement to remove multiple elements. All right, let's see. Here we have a list called fruits. And we want to remove first two items from this list. Let's write the code to remove multiple items. Del statement and then list name, fruits, and starting index, and ending index. Now we will run this code and see the result. As you can see the result, the first two elements, 
apple and banana, are removed from the list. This is how you can remove multiple items from a list using slicing. Now let's have a look at another example where we can remove items using negative index also. Let's say I want to remove the last two items from the above list, and to do this, we use negative index also. Let's see del statement and then list name fruits and negative index. Now we will run this code and see the result. As you can see the result, the last two items are removed from the list. All right, now we will see one real-time example where we use del statement to remove multiple items from a list. For example, in an online shopping application, users add some items to their shopping carts while browsing. However, these items might have a time limit or expiration date. So, when that time limit is reached, the items need to be automatically removed from the cart. Again, the Dell statement can be useful here. Let's say we have a list named Shopping Cart. Here we have some items along with expiration date. First, we will run this code and print the available items on the screen. There you go. The output screen shows all the items along with the dates, and we need to remove expired items. Items that have passed their expiration date. Let's write the code for this. Here, we are using some modules and functions in this code. If you are beginners to the Python programming, just see the example where we use del statement in real and ignore the topics like module and functions. But don't worry, we will cover those advanced topics in our upcoming videos. For now, just concentrate on del statement and its use in real time. First, we will import datetime module. Here, the import statement is a powerful feature in Python that allows you to use external libraries, modules, and functions in your code. So here, the import statement is used to include a module called datetime in the Python script. And the datetime module is a part of the Python standard library and provides classes for manipulating dates and times. So when you use import datetime, you're bringing the entire datetime module into your script. All right, next I am creating a date object using datetime module and naming it as current date and assuming the current date is August 3rd, 2023. And now we want to remove the expired items from the shopping cart list. So to remove items, I am creating a for loop. Let's see. So the first line of the code uses a for loop to iterate through each item in the shopping cart list. Now inside the loop, we use an if statement to check if the item's expiry date is less than the current date. If an item is expired, we use the remove method to delete it from the shopping cart list. After the loop, we print the updated shopping cart list without the expired items. Let's run this code and see the result. In this example, we use the del statement indirectly by iterating through the list and removing the expired items based on their expiration dates. So this is a how Python code used in real time for removing items from a list. And don't worry about the above for loop and import modules. We will cover those in our upcoming sessions. Just for your understanding where we use this Dell statement in real-world scenarios, we wrote the above code. Now let's move to another example. For example, sometimes we may want to delete the entire list. Let's see how it's done. You can also use the Dell statement to delete the entire list itself. This is useful when you want to free up memory occupied by the list. Let's have a look at some real-time example. So, data analysis often involves working with large data sets. Sometimes, certain data entries might be incorrect or irrelevant to the analysis, and you need to remove them from the data set. So, the Dell statement can be helpful in such cases. Let's say we have a list of data entries, called Dataset, and we want to remove specific entries based on certain conditions. Here we have a list with called dataset and it contains positive and negative values. Now I want to remove all negative values from the list. Let's see how we can do this. Here, 
I am creating a for loop. The first line of the code uses a for loop to iterate through each element, num in the dataset list, and inside the loop. We use an if statement to check if the current element num is less than zero, which means it is a negative number. And if we find a negative number, we use the del statement to remove that element from the dataset list. And after the loop, we print the updated dataset list without the negative numbers. Let's run this code and see the result. And there you have it. With just a few lines of code, we effectively removed all the negative numbers from the dataset list. And using the del statement in Python, you can easily remove elements from a list or delete the entire list itself. Be cautious when using del, as once you delete an element, it cannot be recovered. It's a good practice to make sure you really want to remove the elements before using the del statement. And that's a wrap for today's video. Thank you for joining me in today's video, where we've covered some fundamental concepts about lists, such as modifying lists, lists concatenation, replication, and the powerful del statement. But wait, there's more to explore. In our next video, we'll dive even deeper into the world of lists. We'll unravel advanced topics like list comprehension, sorting, working with lists, and more. So don't miss out. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you stay updated with all the exciting Python content coming your way. As always, feel free to leave any questions or suggestions in the comments section below. Your feedback helps me tailor future content to suit your needs. Keep coding, keep exploring, and keep having fun with Python. Until next time, happy coding, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everyone. Happy coding.